seems legit. Hey guys, and welcome back. Today I am doing the How You Doing Bowler Bag by Sincerely Jen. Um, I did my own kind of straps, and we've also used my own kind of strap connectors. And I've added the tassel that I did in a video a while ago. I finally got around to the bag. Uh, but it is a very cute bag. We've done bag feet. Um, on the inside, which I have now ironed, we've also got a zipper pocket with an overlay, a zipper overlay. Um, and I have ironed, which I didn't do a very good job of, or I moved it before it was set. But I have ironed the inside of the bag to the foam on the outside to give it like a nicer, straighter finish. Uh, but anyway, this is like a pretty fun and quick bag. But it's pretty quick. It is a fun bag to do. I quite like how it's come out. Um, and it's really great for panels because I've used like some really cool panel-y fabric here. So if you'd like to see how to make this bag, please stay tuned. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. So we've got a size 19 needle with M40 thread, which is the equivalent of Tech 70. Because I get that question a lot about what I'm using. So I always use a size 19 needle, or 18 needle on this, sorry. 18 on this, 19 on the cylinder arm. Um, so I have already pre-done everything to this. So this is my awesome fabric I'm using. I have already put the foam and the hefty on here. I haven't trimmed down the uh, foam as well as I should, but that's okay. So, and this is just the tassel. You would have seen this in a video a while ago. So I have put... Uh, rose gold HTV on the back so that it's just super fabulous and I added some beads. I also felt this really cool skull bead so I've added that as well. Um, so that's just like a finishing touch. So what I'm currently looking for, and I probably should have done this first, is my zipper section here. And so that's the lining for the zipper. And I'm thinking uh, rainbow zipper tape for this uh, with a black because it kind of goes because it's got a lot of colours going on. And I always just kind of make up the zipper tape as I sit down to sew. I don't really plan that out, if I'm very honest with you. So I'm going to take one of the lining pieces, and on the straight edge, because one's got kind of a curve and one is straight, we are going to line up the zipper. Now I'm going to um, clip this. Don't really know why, I just feel like using clips today. I can make these, when I'm speed sewing, I tend to not use a lot of clips. I can just kind of hold it in place. But, oh good, my aircon just kicked in. It's not so much hot today, but it's very muggy. So I've put my aircon on. I may at some point have to pause the video and turn it off or get a jumper or something. We'll see. Right, so you'll also notice that I haven't pre-cut the zip. I've just lined it up. Now I can grab my scissors, which are too far away to reach. Bring my cart closer, that's going to help. So I'm using my good scissors, which is not necessarily the best thing. But if you are using your good scissors, or you only own one pair of sewing scissors, make sure you cut the teeth at the back of your scissors. That way you're less likely to wreck them. Right, so now I've done that, I'm going to grab one of my top pieces and put it right sides down to create my zipper sandwich. Pin the two ends so that they line up and then put the rest in. Now the reason I do it that way is because sometimes you can stretch things out of shape whereas I know that these are the right size. So if you pin the two ends everything else should just fit in the middle like that. So we're doing a uh, quarter inch because it's against the zipper tape. So it's always quarter inch against the zipper tape. And back stitch. Now because I put all my clips up the right way, I was able to pull them off as I went. I'm going to put them back in their tub. And then I'm just going to fold over just the top. Now you can iron this if it's more helpful. I'm just going to finger press it though. So that I don't have to get up. And then I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch from this seam over here. And I want to go up to a nice decorative. So I've gone all the way up to three and three quarters. And I will constantly change that. Anywhere between three and four is good. And back stitch at the other end. Then back to your joining stitch length. Trim off those tails. 
And then I'm going to flip this over and finger press the other side back just so that it's out of the way. And again, you can iron this if you've got space for an iron handy. Ironing would be a good idea. So that's one side. We are now going to repeat ourselves on the other side. So straight edge, clip, clip. And I'm just going to put one in the middle to show you that you can use less clips if you want to. And then grab this one. So I have made it so that the pattern should line up. That is just because I really like this print. You could have also done this part in vinyl. Would have looked cool too. Each to their own, I guess. So we're going to start here. We're going to backstitch. We're going to line everything up. And zoom along. Take off the clip. Line everything up. Where's my zipper gone? Okay. And backstitch at the other end. Now, I can actually, from here spin it around and just pull that back go back up to my three and three quarter stitch length back stitch as always even though we didn't cut it we should still back stitch and then i'm just going to sew along now i plan on using rose gold with this i can also hear that my bobbin is having a moment so let me just pull it out and see what its problem is so somewhere along the way it got all kind of messed up so I have to undo that I can't work with that it's like pulled it all this is going to be a real problem for when we continue sewing it's all become loose very 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 loose uh, so what I'm going to use so this is a problem that I have if I go too fast All right, we're back to a point where it's no longer all skewy. So I'm just going to put it on my bobbin winder. And then rewind it back up just with my hand. This is the easiest way to do that when you have a lot of thread that's the problem. Um, rather than doing this the whole time and winding it, you can use your bobbin winder for a more effective, quicker fix. I wasn't going to throw out the thread because that's wasteful, but I wasn't going to spend five minutes hand winding it back on either because nobody has time for that. All right. Do one full rotation and it pulls up your bobbin thread. So now we need to put on some zips on here. Um, I haven't actually grabbed out my hardware yet. I'm just hoping I've got some here. There's one, and there's two. So I'm going to put two zips on here. Even though I've used rainbow thread, I do want to use the rose gold hardware because it matches my tassel that I made. It's kind of a bit of a theme I have going on. Nope, that's crooked. I can already tell that's crooked. So is that. It went the other way that time. You want to make sure the teeth really do line up. You can usually see it at the start. That's better. Then I'm going to come to this side. Crack the teeth. Push it in. Like so. Line them up. Nope. Missed by one tooth. There we go. And then you always want to bring them to the middle to make sure that there's no lump on either side. That is fabulous. Obviously, that's not perfect in the middle, but just wherever. Wherever there. I'm also going to finger press this over just so it doesn't kind of misbehave too much. And so that is now the top part of the zipper done. Next up in our tub of things... We don't want, actually, we could do the accents. So I've done the accents. I'm using um, two shades of like a purple and a pinky purple for this bag because I thought it would be very cool. There. All right. So 
We're going to take our main panel. Now I've picked two different pictures so that uh, whoever's got the bag or whoever buys it can pick which one's the front and which one's the back. Um, and I did waste a little bit of fabric doing this, but it looks better, so it's worth it. There's no point in having half a picture uh, because it just won't look cool. If you're going to buy a big print, be prepared to waste a bit of fabric lining up your center point or your center of the design. So this one, I tried to get the guy that looks like the Groom Reaper just kind of poking into the corner. That was a very deliberate move right there. All right, so I've put some double-sided tape just in a straight line randomly on here, just so that I can um, stick them in place. So I'm gonna put them in the corners like so, and these will be cute little accents. Now you can put them either way. I'm putting them so that they're taller, but you could also have them so that they're wider. So that's two stuck down. I'm going to stick all four and then I can chain sew the lot of it because we always, we all know how much I love chain sewing. You should also have a bin near you or something that you can classify as the rubbish bin to get rid of all the scrappy bits. Because there's nothing worse than being surrounded by mess. Now, I'm still on my decorative stitch length from earlier. So I'm just going to start here. I'm going to do two stitches and then back stitch. And then I'm going to move Scully because I'm going to knock all of those over. And then we're just going to go around. Now, if you you don't have as big a throat, you can actually roll it over so that it goes in. And then I'm also just going to do, right on the edge, I'm going to stitch all the sides down so that it has no possible chance of lifting later. Oh, I was going to chainsaw, wasn't I? Right, so we just grab another one. You can start wherever. You don't have to sew the whole way around them, uh, but I like the idea. Because now I won't accidentally miss that when I'm stitching the bag together later. It's one less thing I have to think about. Which means I can concentrate on getting all the curves nice. Right, so then we're going to grab the next one and put it in. And you can just straight go on and then once you've done a little bit, you just chop it off. Turn up the angle. Whatever way works better for you. Some people like to go up the curve. Some people like to go down the curve. I don't really have a preference if you can't half tell. I'm going to chop that one off. Cross the bottom. And up the side. Back stitch. And that's all four of my accents done with very little um, thread waste. Now while I'm here, I'm just going to straighten up this foam. So you can see that there's a little bit extra. You want to straighten that up so that it doesn't get in the way when we're trying to join the bag together. So they look awesome. What else is in my tub? I cut this out ages ago. Not sure what that bit is yet, but give me a minute and I'll figure it out. Okay, so these are my insides. That's my base. That's the side pieces. And this looks like a Tory pocket. So let's do the Tory pocket. They'll be my strap connectors. Oh, no, they're my handles. That makes sense. They're my handles. Okay. Tory pocket. I'll do that in a minute, actually. Let's join these on the end because I want to do that. So. I'm not doing binding in this. If you were to do binding in this bag, you'd put all four layers and stitch them. I'm not doing binding today. I don't feel like it. So I only want to clip the lining to the lining. 
So I'm going to do that to both ends. And I'm using two clips because one clip never holds it properly, just so you know. Uh, you can do more if you need to. Because it is lining, you can also use pins if that's your preference. So now that I've got that, I'm going to hold the exterior out of the way. And I'm going to stitch. I'm going to go back to a joining stitch length, actually. And trim off that because it's annoying. I keep my hand sewing needle in here with my pins. Uh, and it's getting in my way. So, this way is no binding, but you will have a lot more tails. So you've got a lot more trimming to do. But that's not so bad. So we want to go up to, but not over, the zipper. Now, if you wanted to do a shoulder strap, we could add D-rings into this part here. Or you could have them attached to the side here if you wanted. Um, these are just some design options you can do. I am not doing those today. I don't want a shoulder strap on this one. So we're going to stitch and back stitch. And what I have realized I've done, and I just remembered why I have done this, is I haven't cut out any um, handle connectors for the outside. And that reason for that is, is because I hadn't quite decided what I was going to do. Uh, part of me was going to embroider some cool skull ones, but I don't have any cool skulls that go with it to make the connectors. So we might just draw from my set of strap connector templates and we'll pick one of those the pattern does come with some um but i felt that they weren't quite going with my fabric in my brain it has a very specific look going on so so again we're going to stitch up to the zip but not over it and then back stitch because we always back stitch if i can teach you one thing sewing it's backstitch now we're gonna still have a gap and i'm gonna deal with that in a minute so we do still have a gap both in the lining and the exterior and i can get my fingers through it see there we're gonna sew that together in a minute but i'm trying to do this in a flow for you up to but not over the zip back stitching trim your tails Flip it over, pull all of the other bits out of the way so you're only stitching those two. You do not want to catch your lining in this. I'm going to do that in a minute. Right, trim those tails. Then we're going to open this out so it's flat with all the layers and we're just going to stitch over the zipper to close that up and join all four bits together. But you don't want to do it the full length. We're only doing it just either side of the zipper. So we're going to stitch. We're going to go over the zip. We're going to back stitch. And that's all we're going to do. So now there's no hole on the outside. But these here are still separate. So that we can stitch the linings together and exteriors. So we're going to do the same to this end. Make sure it's all flat and sitting evenly and beautiful. And then we're going to go stitch, back stitch, over the zip, back stitch some more. If you've got your D ring in there, you'll want to zigzag across all of here as well if you've decided to do a shoulder strap. Okay, that looks lovely. I like it. So that is now going to go around the bag. So we can put that aside. Now I'll do the Tory pocket. So we're going to uh, fold it so right sides are together. And then, because I don't want to get up, I can actually just grab one of my um, zipper templates. It's going to make the zipper a smidgy bit smaller, but that's okay. Actually, 
actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I am instead going to grab these. Since I have to get up and make strap connectors, I am also going to cut one of these for it. So, instead, I'm just going to take one of these, and they're all the same size, so it doesn't matter. And I'm going to line it up, and that's going to be the rectangle. Just put it in the middle. And then we'll, we'll sew this and then I'll get up and I'll hit pause and I'll go and cut out the extra bits I want to do. And turn off my computer because it's dimming. Alright. So I'm going to find the centre on the half that I drew on. And I'm going to find the centre of the bag because I want the pocket to sit in the middle. Then the side that I drew on comes to the bottom. And we're going to line up the snips so that everything's in the center, like that. Now, if you're using waterproof canvas, it's slippery. So you're going to want to clip it here and here to hold everything in place. This fabric doesn't need it, but I just thought I'd show you because it's good to know. If yours is like moving around and you can't get it, just put a clip here and here to hold all the layers together. And then you can kind of be a lot more rougher with it and it won't matter. So... I'm going to start in the corner, I'm going to stitch, back stitch, and then go along the long part of the rectangle I drew and then back stitch at the other end, spin it 180, jump across to that second line, this is called a jump stitch. You can, if you would prefer, trim it off and then start again with a tail, but this wastes less thread and is actually quicker. Back stitch. Trim the tails and trim that jump stitch so that it doesn't distort anything. So again, trim the jump stitch. You can take off your clips now because it's sewed. Then I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to fold this in half and I'm going to snip. Now, you saw me push on the end of those. That's because it just gives it a little extra oomph so that you're not hurting your hand this end. So for anyone that has uh, bad wrists or bad hands, that is a really good option. So you just lay it down and then you just push and it gives it extra oomph so that you're not hurting your hands trying to cut things. Not that this is overly thick, but always a good tip to have. Right. So now that I've chopped that, I've put little triangles in the corner so that it's now, technically it's not a corner because I didn't sew this bit, but I've just gone up to the line that I drew. Then I'm going to finger press this up and then finger press this down and then push it through. Now, if this was waterproof canvas, I could just do all of that with my hands, but I am in fact going to iron this. Oh my God, shush. Right. Don't know who's messaging me, but I'm busy. Right, so we're going to just flatten that. I'm going to iron this. I'm also going to take one of these and I'm going to make an accent around it because I think it's going to be pretty. Um, and I also need to cut out some strap connectors. So I'm going to hit pause and do that because I didn't realize I didn't do it. And then we'll come back and finish the bag. Alrighty, I have cut some stuff. So I've gone with a rounded edge. So in this set... I went with number 13 for the strap connectors on the outside. And I went with number 3, which is the rounded edge in the accent or zipper overlays, whichever you wish to call it. So now I need double sided tape. So I'm using my quarter inch or 6mm to put along here. And where's my snips? Over there. So I'm putting just some double-sided tape, and this is just going to hold it in place while I stitch it to make my life easier. These I'm going to put in my tray for later. Oops, and that one. Right, so peel off the backing, and then we just lay it over the top of the zipper. Since it's called a zipper overlay, it's pretty self-explanatory. Right. So I'm going to make sure that the pocket is sitting flat. 
and I'm going to stitch the outside circle with a three quarter or three and three quarter length stitch length. Now I'm not going to back stitch because I'm going to end up at the same spot. But another option, if you really don't want to see your back stitch, make sure you stop with your needle down. You can actually pull the thread through the back and then tie it off and you won't see it at all because nobody's going to look inside the back part of this. They're just not. So I like to do three knots personally if I'm going to do it this way. Normally I would just backstitch when we get back to the start, but we'll do it this way today just for something different. You always want to be nice and slow on curves. And you can always be a bit quicker on the straight bits. You never want to start on a curve because it's always harder. Now I'm just going to go back through that original hole like that, pull it out, and then again we're going to pull it through and tie it off just because I did it to the first lot. I could have also just backstitched, but this is neat, and I like neat sometimes. And so now you won't be able to tell where I started and finished because there's no visual thing of it. Beautiful. Right, zipper tape. We need some more. I'm going to check my scrap pieces. These are all bits that are just too small to roll up, but too big to throw away. Uh, but there's no rainbow in there, so we'll just go back. Oh, actually, what's that bit? Nope, also not it, but that'll do. So I just need to cut a piece of zip the width of my zipper pocket. Now, if you're doing a different size zipper pocket, you will therefore need a different amount. Like so. Roll this back up. Put a rubber band on it and put it back in the cupboard. So we're going to put our zipper pull onto the zipper tape and you want to get it kind of in the middle. You don't want to go too far in if that's possible. So I'm just going to go to there. It's kind of a third of the way in I guess. And then I want it closing to the left. So I lay that in front and then I'm going to pick this up making sure that the pocket stays flat and just flop it over the top. Like so. And now I'm going to start just in front of the zipper and stitch the rectangle, the inner rectangle. And then when I get back to the zip, I'm going to put my needle down, lift up my presser foot and zip it further over so that I can now do the other half of this without any hiccups, I guess is the right word. And then when I get back to the start, I'm just going to do a little back stitch and then trim it off. Now this should just fold down and line up with the bottom. So if you pick it up, it should actually just kind of hang there. And then I'm going to peel back the sides and only stitch the sides of the pocket, not the end. We're not doing the end yet. Actually, you might want to go back to a joining stitch length. It won't make a huge deal of difference for your pocket here. Back stitch. Now you can add a second pocket on the other wall if you want to, or add some slip pockets and things. I'm just going to leave this a nice simple bag with just the single zipper pocket. But that looks super cute. And the accent makes it easy to find the pocket amongst my very, very busy print. So let's go back to our main panel piece. We are going to line up the ends so that we can find the center and we're going to clip it. We are all about centers because centers are easier. 
center, center clip. And then you want to pull the lining out so that it's lined up. And then you want to clip the lining for the center as well. Because that is important. Right, so I've got the four center points on the four pieces here. I am now going to take one side of the lining and I fold this in half and find the center top. You will need the center top and the center bottom of these panels. So you may even want to do that now while you remember. So here's the other wall. Yep, missed. Oop, missed again. So now we've got the center of both pieces. So you also want to make sure your zip is open. I'm just going to do that now. We're going to start in the center, lining up those center points. We're going to grab Scully because we are going to need a lot of clips. And I want my clips to face the zipper piece. Or gusset piece. I'm not sure what they called it in the pattern. But that piece. And I'm going to put a few clips like that. So I'm going to put five at the top. Then I'm going to come to the side and I'm going to line up this bottom. And we're going to pull back this side because we don't want to get the exterior caught up in this. And then I'm going to clip up towards the curve. So I've gone pretty much to the curve here. And now this needs to fit into that space. Like so. And then we're going to clip it in place. And you'll probably use more clips on the curve than you do on the straight. So then we're going to come to the other side and do the same thing. So I want the clips to face the zippery bit. I'm also, this little um, seam here, I'm making it point towards the bottom of the bag. Oh, and the clip's the wrong way. It is important to get your clips the right way because you can pull them off as you're sewing like I normally do. It just makes it a little bit quicker. If they are upside down, it doesn't work. So, food for thought there. So I'm just going to take some clips, work that curve in like so. Right, so now the edge of the bag is in. So. I'm going to start with the zipper gusset part facing up and I'm going to start here and I'm going to stitch and I'm going to back stitch and then I'm just going to slowly move around that curve making sure that we're not catching anything else <clears throat> that might get in the way. Around we go. back stitch at the other end. Trim off those tails so that they're not hanging around annoying you. And then I'm going to take my zigzag scissors. These are Fisker scissors for anyone that wants to know. And I'm just going to cut the excess off the curve. And this is going to help it sit nicer in the bag a little bit later. The zigzags help the curve to kind of move better, so it's not going to be so jagged inside your bag. Awesome! You can now also open your zip, which might help for the next part, because now we're going to do the other lining side. Now I haven't put anything on this. You can add a slip pocket or a zipper pocket or whatever floats your boat. A sunglasses pocket. Depends on what you're into. I'm just keeping this bag nice and simple. Um, and the less feature points you put on the bag, the cheaper you can make it. Not that it's all about how cheap you can make a bag, but people like different price points. So by adding less pockets, this will be in the lower price point, which makes it more affordable for people. So again, we're going to do the curve now. Grab some clips. Clip it on 
and then we'll do the other half. So again, come to the bottom, clip, make sure that this is facing towards the bottom. So we're going to do that on the exterior as well. You want to make sure that that faces down. It makes the bag sit a little bit nicer. It's very subtle, but there is a difference. So it's good to do it. Obviously I can't make you, but you know, you're here to learn stuff. That's the thing we're teaching. So now I'm just going to maneuver this into the corner. So you will get a little bit of bubbling uh, or rippling or whatever you want to call it, where the lining doesn't look like it fits. Uh, ignore that if it's at the end. It only matters if it's in the stitch line because we are trying to put a bigger shape into a smaller shape with the seam allowance. So it doesn't matter that it ripples a little bit. That is totally normal um, and nothing to be concerned about. So long as it's not where you're stitching, which is also why we use the zigzag scissors to cut off the excess uh, and that'll stop that rippling from existing. at the end and I just ran out of bobbin thread that was weirdly good timing Oops. so now we should have this it looks weird but just bear with me so you should have both your inner pieces I now need to do a bobbin so I'm gonna hit pause do a bobbin and then we're going to continue building bobbin is now replenished so you want to grab your base of your lining and then we're going to fold this in half so that I can find the center point. And then we're going to fold it in half the other way so that we can find the other center points. And this is just going to help make sure that we get it all tucked in nicely. Points everywhere. So you should have now four points marked. So I'm going to just grab one side and I want to grab the side that the zip is on. Uh, this will just make it a little bit easier later and I'm going to line up that center point, clip it, and go three, four, and five. So I'm only going to stitch from clip to clip and then I'm going to leave the rest completely open. And you might be wondering why. The answer is, is because it is so much easier to turn a bag through a bigger hole. So we're basically leaving the entire base as the hole. So if you've done this bag in all vinyl or leather or like something very, very stiff and you've used a lot of interfacing, it will now be very easy to turn the bag through later. So that is now all done. We're going to pop that aside. And I'm going to grab my main panel pieces and I'm going to grab my strap connectors that I have built. So the first thing I want to do is grab my rings. I'm using chunky rectangle rings because rose gold is going to look fabulous. And so I've still, I've done a different shade to here um, because it's all about the contrasting and that's what the handles are going to do as well. So I thought that would look nice. So. What I want to do is I just want to clip that in place with two clips, one on each side like that. And we're going to do that to all of them. Oops. Dropping everything. And two. Like that. So now I'm going to take double sided tape. I'm going to use the thicker one because it will fit. And I'm just going to put a, sl a slice, a piece, down the center. I suppose it is like a slice. You want to just make sure it's not going to hang out the end. So I am chopping it just slightly shy of the end. You don't want to be able to see it later. It will just attract dirt and muck. Okay. So now I've got this. Now I need a ruler. 
so that I can line them up. Um, I'm going to eyeball the first one and then work from there. So it is going to cover one of my dudes, which I don't love the idea of, or two of my dudes. Um, but what can we do? The answer is not a lot. So I think I want them about there. So I'm going to take my ruler. So I'm positioning them two inches down, but to make sure that they're centered, I'm going to fold this in half. Now this will always fold one way better than the other, so let it do it. Right, that's the center. And that's the center. Now I'm going to peel off my backing. Now, the pattern will have um, exact measurements of where to put this, but I'm trying to get as much pattern in as I can. So then we're going to go... I guess I'm going to go three across and stick it there. And then one, two, three across and stick it there. So I've got them quite wide so that I can see as much of my center point pattern as possible. Now, depending on what pattern you've picked, you may want to adjust this further um, one way or the other. But for this particular one and these type of strap connectors, I'm going to go here. I'm going to move Scully. Now, this is a curve. So again, with the curve, and we have to be slow and patient. But it's worth it because these are curves. So if I had done something square, I don't think I would have liked it as much. Just do two little back stitches and then trim off those tails. Like so. Then I'm going to go to the next one. I'm also going to put some rose gold rivets in this. Um... To bring out a little bit more hardware. So we go, I always do along the top first. I find that easier. Voila. I'll pop that one down there out of my way. Then we're going to do the same to this. So see how it folds one way better than the other? So I'm going to line this up in the middle. I'm doing two inches down and three inches over. But again, the pattern probably has something different. And they have a different shape. Doesn't mean that you can't use the shape that they have. I just am doing my own thing today. Because this different strap connectors will give the bag a very different feel. So that's just something to think about when you're designing a bag. Take that off. Under we go. I can take the clips off now. And then around that curve and backstitch. It's not super hard to do. It just, it is slower stitching than what I normally do. That just moved. I don't know if you guys saw that. I saw that. It moved. How rude. Let 
All right, that looks too high now. What's going on? Right there. Sometimes the double-sided tape is not as awesome as we would like and things slip. Uh, if you have that problem, you can always just stick on one at a time and then do it as soon as you've stuck it down. Or I could have added more double-sided tape to give it more of a grip. Now you'll notice I've just grabbed this other corner. This is going to be helpful in doing that curve, moving the bag around as it's stitching. Back stitch, pull it out, trim it off. Cut the tails. Ta-da! Right. Let's do some... Where are my rivets? Oh, My rose, rose gold rivets have gone AWOL. That's a bit annoying. I don't have to do rivets I just thought it might have looked nice but maybe we'll keep it completely clean just because you know in the interest of time but you could definitely add you could add one rivet you could add a big rivet and then a small rivet and have it kind of decreasing you could put rivets along here if that's kind of the stud look that we're going for so I'm gonna take my base I'm gonna move on from the rivet thing take my base I have used um a variegated thread which looks it actually to me looks very Cheshire cat but whatever it's still cool I'm gonna take a normal pen and I'm going to measure where I'm gonna put my bag feet now some patterns have exact um, like measurements on the pattern some don't I'm gonna go there and there there and there. I always use four bag feet because my embroidery design is in the center. Um, those that don't do this you may want to put a fifth one in the center as well. Personal choice. Some people do, some people don't. I don't because that's where my logo is. Now I'm just gonna punch the holes with my hole punch. This is a two mil hole punch for anyone that wants to know that. Then I'm going to take my bag feet, which are in my Lord of the Rings bowl, and I'm going to push them up from the bottom, like that. So you want to put in all your posts, then you can flip it over and click on these. You can also do screw-in bag feet if you don't have a press. Um, I don't have them in rose gold though. I should probably get onto that. All right, so now I'm just using my normal rivet press to set these. So I always have them right sides up because the dome doesn't get damaged with all this rubber. And you just want to push it until you feel it click. You don't want to squeeze it as tight as possible. You are going to damage your dome. But you kind of, you feel it go. And then the back feet are installed, which is lovely. All right, we are up to the final bits of construction. So I've done that and I can pop it down there. I just wanted to do it so I didn't forget bag feet because I have a nasty habit of doing that. And then I have to really try and focus to get them on or unpick things, which I also don't love doing. So I'm gonna line up those center points that we did earlier and I'm gonna clip it facing the zipper gusset piece. And I'm going to do three clips along the top, or five clips, sorry, like that. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom here and line that up. And again, I'm going to make this face the bottom, clip it down. Now, because this has got foam and like whatever other interfacings you've put on, it's going to be stiffer. So 
I still need to get it into that corner, but I'll be using a lot more clips than I would have on the lining to make sure that it stays in place. So basically the clips just get closer together. And that way the curve can't move while I'm trying to sew it. So I'm going to come to the other side and do the same thing. So I'm going to go bottom to top. You may also want to flick down your um, square rings so that they are out of the way for the sewing. You don't want to accidentally get one. Which can happen. Everybody thinks it can't happen to them, but I promise you it can. It happens to me on occasion when I'm not paying attention. So you just forget about them. So if you make a conscious effort to manually move them out of the way, then you're less likely to run over them and break a needle and maybe even your machine, depending on how dramatically it ran over it. Okay. So that is now all of my clips. And you can see as we get to the corners, they get more and the straight bits have less. So I'm gonna start at the bottom. I'm gonna stitch and I'm gonna back stitch. I also need to be on a joining stitch length, which I can usually see with how it stitches, which is why I knew to change it because it was they were a bit too big. So we're just gonna go around the curve I'm going to stop here and clean up the clips because I don't like a lot of mess here. I end up concentrating more on the mess than on the curve that I'm trying to stitch and then I break something. And backstitch there as well. Okay. Zigzag scissors. Again, if you don't have zigzag scissors, you can just use straight ones. It will be almost the same. Again, I'm just doing the curves because I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. The reason we left this bit up here is for an actual reason. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lining and those and I'm going to line up those centre points and I'm going to clip the lining and the exterior together from that same side of the zipper. Alright, so it'll be joined and then I'm just going to stitch a little bit of a stitch along the top here within the seam allowance. So we're not going to see this, but what this is going to do is it's going to help hold the roof of the bag up. Now you don't want to do it the whole way around. It's really hard to turn through, but I've just done like a section here. So now what's going to happen is when I turn the bag through later, right, like this, this isn't going to sag because it's now attached physically to the top. So sometimes if you don't do it, you won't get this nice crisp kind of corner. It just kind of hangs down. But now that I've stitched it, it actually can't hang. So you're going to get a neater inside of your bag because I've stitched it to the exterior like that. So that's why we're doing it. Let's turn the bag back out because I'm not finished. So that's one side. Now let's go to the other side. So that's over here. It's going to look weird where it's sitting, but it's just how it is, so don't worry about it too much. So we're going to grab the other exterior and line up our center points. Add some clips. Again, I'm going to do five. You can obviously do more. You don't have to do my magical five. But I just find on the exterior, three clips isn't enough. I mean, you can do more. I probably wouldn't do less, though. So there, and then I'm going to push this towards the bottom so that they are all facing towards the bottom. It's going to make for a nicer bag. And it's just like a very subtle difference to when you have it pointing up to down. But if you know what you're looking for, you can tell. Clips, lots of clips on the curve. like that. I've got a lot of clips on that one. Again, because I'm now fighting the whole bag. Line up the base, push that down. The other reason for pushing it down is now we know that all of them are facing down, so you're not going to have a weird twisty bit either. Okay. 
Grabbing the rest, clipping, clipping. Smooth it all out, clip it all down. Okay, lots of clips. Gusset right sides up, and I'm just gonna push this over with my arm. So my arm's gonna help hold it out of the way. Line it up at the seam allowance. Now the reason I always get good seam allowance is I've got a plate with um, grooves in it. You can usually purchase one specifically for your machine or you can measure it out and then use like a cool magnet because this is like a guide magnet. It's quite strong magnet in it um, and you can do it that way. So if you can't get a seam guide plate, just use a magnet to get a nice edge. Now again, I'm just pushing everything out of the way. Clean up the clips as I go. Push that back over there. And backstitch. Then again, we are going to come up to the top. We are going to line up that center point with the center point of the lining. So we want to do it to both sides. I'm just going to put three clips on this because for the most part it's going to stay still and it's only a very short bit. So then I'm going to stitch. I stitch about a quarter of an inch from the seam allowance, which is roughly in the middle of what we've got going on. And again, it doesn't need to be the whole way. It just needs to be a couple of inches. You could probably even get away with less than that, uh, but I wouldn't do more. Trimming off all of the tails that you can see because I've been neglecting them lately. It's very naughty of me. So now we're up to putting in the bottom. So I'm gonna take this. I've already got my center points because of how I put in this. Uh, but if you haven't got that, you need to put your center points. I also need to find the center points of the exterior, which I didn't do. So now I have to do it attached to the bag. I mean, that's not the end of the world. It's not that difficult, really. So we've now got center points. All we need to do is line them up. So I'm going to start with a long edge. I always like to start with a long edge. I'm going to clip and I'm going to, even though that this is a straight bit, I am going to use a lot of clips because in a minute we're going to flick it over to the other side and because of all the interfacing and stabilizer, it is going to try and fight me a little bit. So now I'll come over here and grab this side and do the other long side. So I'm putting a clip approximately every inch. It's not a perfect amount, but you get the idea. Lots of clips, even though it's a nice straight edge. Because now I've got to get these ends in. Now, if you're on a domestic machine, you're going to want to cut these down. So I'm going to do it just to show you. You want to cut the excess off on like a weird angle. So that when we're stitching, it's not as thick for you. Because you've got to remember we've got vinyl accents in amongst this seam as well. You just want to trim it down. And then veer it off like that and that's that much that you no longer have to stitch through it has also made the bag that much lighter now it's not a lot but if you're trying to go for a light handbag and not a super heavy one every little bit helps and then you should just be able to clip it in place now because it looks like you could just let it sit there and sew it but don't be fooled because as you're sewing, it will try and move. So definitely clip it down. That's my life advice to you. Because it can be tricky and sneaky. And I'm also making all the pieces face the base because I'm going to sew it with the base piece facing up because that's going to be easier. Uh, if I was on my cylinder arm, however, I would probably do it the other way with all the clips the other way and then feed it through under like that. But this way will be easier on a flatbed. Right, so then we're just gonna come in here, we're gonna stitch, we're gonna back stitch. We're gonna go slowly. We're not in a hurry. 
We're going to clean up our clips as we go. And I'm using the stabilizer as my guide. I'm not actually watching the edge because the stabilizer is exactly the right size. You want to stitch either one stitch on or one stitch off from your stabilizer. And I'm, I'm rotating this bag around as I go. Whoops. And then I'm back to the start and I'm going to backstitch. And then trim off those tails. And then we're going to grab the zigzag scissors again. And please know, I do know they're called pinking shears. Zigzag's just more fun to say. Then I'm going to trim off all of this. You may be asking why all of it. The answer is so that the bag and the lining sits nicer on the inside. Now, this is really thick there. These are pretty new scissors, so they can handle it. If you can't, feel free to grab your vinyl cutting scissors and do it with that instead. Chop it all off like that. So now that we've got less seam allowance, it is going to allow the lining to sit further in. So let's turn the bag through the base, which should be lovely and easy because we left the whole bottom of the bag open. You could have left less of a hole, um, but this shouldn't be too difficult to fix, so I'm going to show you in a minute. So I'm pushing out those curvy corners because I want them to sit really nicely. I want it to come all the way out and sit beautifully. This is also a really good chance to check and see if you've missed anywhere. Because if you have, you can go back now and fix it and it's easy to turn the bag through. It is getting there. We're nearly finished. I'm just gonna sew up the bottom, sew up the handle. So I'm just making sure that the shape of the bag is all good. See here how it's pulling in a little bit? I am gonna fix that right now by folding it over, getting my pliers and squeezing that seam. It's just because it's thicker with all the vinyl, it's trying to not sit as flat as I'd like. And see how that one now sits and that one's curved? So I'm going to do the same to that. I'm just going to push it out on that seam and then squish it. Now, if you don't have these awesome pliers, uh, they're leather working pliers because they've got no um, grip parts in here. So they are perfect for squishing things. If you don't own them, you can just Tory squish. It will just take you an extra little bit to do that. And since I have them, I may as well use them. So I'm just going to squish that there. And then this side as well, like this. I'm going to do all four parts because they're all going to be the same. And see how that now sits already a lot nicer. Now I'm not worried about the rest yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my hand into the zipper pocket and pull through the lining. Like so. Now it's already attached to one side, so yay for that. And now all I need to do, oh, what happened there? I've got to grab this side as well. I've got to grab both the bits, otherwise this isn't going to work. You find the center of your center here and the center of the short side here. We're going to line them up and clip them together. So this is going to go exactly the same as the exterior, except it's going to be more fiddly because I'm trying to pull it through a zipper pocket. And it can be done, so don't think that it can't be. It's just going to be a little bit more stubborn is all. So I can usually do this without clipping it, so I'm going to attempt that and we'll see how we go. Worst case scenario is I have to unpick it all. But I'm going to start where I left off and I'm going to do a couple of stitches and backstitch to lock in everything. 
And then around we go. Needle down, readjust the bag. Now I know this looks a little bit messy and it probably is a little bit messy, but it was also very easy to turn this bag through. So worth it. And all I'm doing is lining up the seams as I stitch and then readjusting the bag. And after practice, this actually works and you don't even need clips. I know it looks like a mess, but it is working beautifully. Now, obviously, I can't really show you what's going on here, but you can tuck the old part that we've stitched back in, and that will give more room to the part we're trying to get to. little corner last two inches and back stitch now as messy and complicated as that looked I promise it wasn't really it just looks hard it's not really all that difficult and then the base is in Ta -da! so now I just need to take my zipper pocket tuck in those ends fold it down and stitch that shut. Now you can iron that, you can add clips, or you can just do what I'm going to do and just sew it. Done. And trim those tails. The bag's sitting a bit wonky at the moment, but just... Give me a sec. So I always like to stand up and I push the base first, then I push the outsides. Now see here, we will need to Tory squish that so that it sits flatter and neater. But all in all, that's looking pretty cool. And then it's got the two zips. So I can set that aside. And now we just need to do our handles. Now for these handles, oh, and we can add this on because it's just fabulous. Probably a little bit long, but nobody cares. I can always make it shorter. I think it looks fabulous. So these are the main parts of the um, handles. Whoops. So I'm going to grab my double-sided tape and I'm going to stick a line of tape down the center like so. And then the next line like that and then we're just going to fold both sides into the center like this you can start from an end or you can start from the middle it actually doesn't matter so long as it's sticking down is the main point of this now I'm going to do one at a time so that it doesn't pop back up we're just pushing it down, lining it up in the middle. This takes a little bit of practice to do it this way, but you should try because it becomes way quicker to do um, things. So now this is going to lay in the center like this. So it's just a little bit shorter so that we're going to see kind of like an accent on each side. I'm going to go back up to my decorative stitch length. I am going to stitch to three holes which should be two full stitches and then go back into the first hole you can also back stitch if you would prefer and i am stitching an eighth of an inch from the top purple i'm using my fingernails to hold it centered and as you can see it started lifting but that's okay not up to that bit yet i'll deal with it in a minute I want to hold this in the center, so then I'm going to come back here, push it back down. This is why I'm doing one at a time, by the way. Needle down, squish this back down. 
making sure it's still lining up in the center otherwise it'll be a different size and then I'm going to get to the end and I'm going to go across I'm thinking maybe strap ends on this would look nice we'll, we'll see and then I'm going to go back up the other side the second side's always quicker because it's kind of holding everything in place and then just in case I decide not to do strap ends, we're going to go across this end as well uh, so that both ends look the same because that is important. And then I'm going to just trim off that excess a little bit there. One strap. See how it's got like a fun little accent going on. It's all vinyl so I don't have to worry about the raw ends, but I can if I want to put strap ends on. I'm undecided yet. I'll see what it looks like when I put the handle on. I constantly change my mind about what I want to do, so, you know, bear with me, we'll think about it. So another way to keep that in place is you can rub it across the edge of the table and it will help crease it and hold it in place. Uh, just make sure that you don't have like a lot of splinters on whatever edge you're rubbing it on or you might damage your vinyl. Everything, you know. So that, theoretically, is now going to stay where it's told. Can't promise that, but it is supposed to because I've now rubbed it on the edge. So again, I'm going to line it up in the center. I'm going to do three holes, which is two stitches, and then go back into the first one. And this is like back stitching. And then we're just going to line it up in the middle and stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge of the top one. Across the bottom edge, up the other side. This side will go quicker, usually. And then we're going to stitch and back stitch. And that is that end done. So now with the bag, I think I want them to go that way because that looks really cool. I like that. That looks nice. So we're going to put two clips and I'm just going to double check. The other option would be is to come forward like this and then put a strap end here and have the strap end hanging out. But I actually think I like it better like this today. For whatever crazy reason. So I'm going to put two clips there and then I'm going to come around and go up. Oh, and I've got to chop off that excess there like that see that looks fabulous and it's playing off both the colors that I've used and that actually helped me use up a bunch of scraps out of my scrap box by doing handles like this I am going to temporarily take that off just because it's in my way Excellent. Two more clips. Then I'm going to have to hit pause so I can find where my rivets are. The rose gold rivets are not where they're supposed to be. Clearly I have not been packing up correctly. That's right. I'll find them in a second. Another option that you have for the, your um, tassel is you can actually attach it to your zipper as well. And then it's like a fun thing that hangs from there. Because that looks cool too. You can kind of hang it from anywhere. Uh, and the client or customer or whoever can decide where to put it. Alright, I'm going to hit pause and grab my rivets. So that I can put rivets into here. Uh, and then the bag's pretty much done. Found them. They were in a container behind another thing. That's fine. So, 
First we want to punch a hole. So while everything's being held evenly, that's not in the center, move the clips out of your way. You want to get it in the middle. Then I'm going to take a post, push the post through, put a cap on the back. Once I've done that, I can remove the clips. Now, if you've got uh, only one machine, you can get to this point for all four and then squish them. But because I've got the two cam presses, line that up, squish it down. So that one's definitely not going anywhere. I do slightly regret not putting one there. I think it would have been pretty. But anyway, moving on. It is still pretty without it. I just like bling at the moment, apparently. I'm all about the bling. Click it on. Take the clips off so that they're easier to get under the machine. Now I will want to iron the inside of this bag and what that will do is that will stick the lining to the foam and the exterior so that there'll be no sagging and rippling and stuff on the inside. So I'm going to squish this one and again rivet. The reason my um, rose gold rivets are still in a bag instead of in the containers is because I don't have enough containers in that wall of like 60 containers. I need to work through some stuff and reorganize it or something. I got a lot of stuff I bought as a trial to see if I liked it and I don't like it enough to sell but I don't want to waste it. So that's in a lot of containers. Because throwing it out would be extra wasteful and that's not who I am. So I'll get around to using it eventually. Okay, last one. I'm gonna clip that in. That's not sitting straight. There we go, squish it down and then pull it out. If you pull the handles out, it'll help this to sit flatter. It will need a good Tory squish and an iron, but how cool is that bag? So you can add the tassel here or here, wherever makes you happy. You don't even need to have a tassel. I just really thought it was cool and it perfectly matches in with the bag and the hardware and everything. You can also um, clip these two together when you're out walking around so people can't sneakily get into your bag. It's like a temporary lock. Anyway, that is how I make this bag. I hope that was fun for you all and I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye!